Do you ever have that one gun that you really regret selling twice? For me, if you've read the title, obviously, that gun is Ruger SR 1911 Lightweight Commander. Third time I bought this gun. I think I'll hang on to it this time. So let's talk about that some more and I'll tell you why I bought it twice and sold it twice and why I'm gonna keep it this time. Let's get started. So why have I bought this gun twice and sold it twice? Well, I bought it three times now. Why have I bought it that many times? It's a good gun. I like it. It's a good weight, a good size. I like a commander size 1911 for carry. Mainly carry one in the winter. Not necessarily as a primary carry, but occasionally I'll do carry it. So the first time I bought it, bought it in like the fall, carried it. Springtime came around, I didn't really carry it that much. As 1911s go, it's kind of in the middle of the road, kind of sort of price wise. It's not like a bottom of the basement Rock Island or ATI, anything like that, but it's certainly no uh, Dan Wesson, uh, Colt, higher end Colt, higher end Springfield, anything like that. So springtime came around and I thought, well, I've got this gun here that's worth a decent bit of money and I could sell it and get something else. So the first one I believe I sold to purchase my silencer or suppressor, whatever you want to call it, for my 300 blackout. So I got that and the second one I bought Got on a good Black Friday deal from SportsmansOutdoorSuperstore.com. Great people, check them out. And same deal, springtime came around. I thought, uh, I'd kind of like to have a drone. Got this 1911 here that I'm not carrying much anymore. I was able to sell it both times. Now I won't sell a gun unless I can at least get what I've got in it or maybe a little bit more. Both times I sold the Ruger 1911, I've got a little bit more than I paid for it. So not a bad deal overall. This time, I think we're gonna keep this one. It's a good gun. There's a couple changes that Ruger has made to these guns since the first two, and we'll talk about those right now. One of the main changes that Ruger has made is there's no front strap. It's not checkering, but they had vertical lines in there. The, those lines are no longer there. This is smooth. I've not shot this gun yet, but we're gonna see how those do. I've got some Talon grip, Talon grip tape like I use on all my guns, but you know, it's not gonna wrap around the whole frame obviously since it's 1911, but it does fit on the first piece here. Uh, I think, you know, in the winter time, if you got gloves on that don't have rubber on the fingers, this could be a little slippery. I don't know why they quit doing that. Maybe a money saving cost, although the prices on this particular gun have seemed to have gone up about $40 or so from what I've seen them previously. And the first one I had came with a little, you know, just a little carrying bag, a little canvas zippered carrying bag. The second one I got didn't come with the bag, but it did have the, you know, the texturing on the front there. This one didn't come with the bag at all and no texturing. But it does feel a little tighter than those other two did. The safety is definitely tighter. This is probably the best feeling safety on a Ruger 1911 I've felt. The first one I had was very loose, and that's one of the reasons I was okay with selling it. It was very loose, didn't really have much of a positive click there, and it came out really easily, which I didn't really care much for. But this one, I put some Militech on it, and I've not shot it yet, but already, it just feels smooth, a lot smoother than the others. Now, because it does have this aluminum alloy frame here, there's a little bit of like a texturing on it, if you can call it that. Not on purpose, it's just the nature of the beast. It's not as smooth as the stainless steel frame. But as I shoot it, it'll wear in, and it'll get even smoother on the action than it already is. Now, just to go over a few more features, it does have very slim grips. I love that about this gun. And that is one of the redeeming factors of a 1911, is they are so slim. And I've brought all my Glocks with me to the range here, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison here in a bit. 
to show just how slim it is. Now, it is a single stack, obviously, 1911, it's 45, but it's so slim. And that's one of the things that make 1911 a good carry gun if you're into that. They are slim. And I do love these slim grips that Ruger put on them. How about I say slim just one more time? Also, it's got true, actual steel Novak sights. I don't know if you can kind of see it in there, but it does say Novak. Three dot, no night sights, anything, just a standard three dot. I like these sights, they're easy to acquire, and I can shoot well with them. And the trigger on this one, the trigger on the second one I had, number two, was a little bit mushy. This one, again, going back to Ruger seems to be making these, or at least this one, a little bit better. Trigger on it, you got a little bit of take up. Nice trigger pull. I don't have a trigger gauge, but I would say probably about four, four and a half pounds. Excellent, excellent trigger. Let's shoot it. Now I've got a variety of ammunition and magazines we're going to shoot today. I've got seven round Metgar, just kind of a blued finish on that one. Then of course the uh, seven round Ruger that came with the gun. These are pretty good. And the Wilson Combat 47Ds. Uh, since this is a, a winter carry gun for me, eight round mag. I, if I'm carrying this, I'm carrying it in a, like an outside the waistband holster got a jacket on really don't worry about printing so I'll run these in it and with the G code double magazine pouch here I wear I don't know if you can see it that one right there uh, I've got a Ruger in the front now but I've got a third Wilson combat magazine back at home those are the ones I'll run in it since this does hold the magazines close to your body it's much better having these plastic base plates rubbing against you than these metal ones and you get an extra round and in a single stack 1911 any extra capacity you can get helps and of course I'm still looking at getting some other magazines I want to try out some 10 rounders I don't know if Wilson Combat makes I, yeah Wilson Combat makes 10 rounders I'm not sure of the model numbers on those but I'm going to try one of the Chip McCormick 10 round magazines I like the base pad those have better so enough talking Let's shoot. And the ammo we're shooting today, the ammo I've got in the gun is just some standard 200 grain ball from Freedom Munitions. And I've got some Winchester 1911 target ammo. This ammo looks kind of funny. It's kind of the opposite of a lot of your personal defense ammo. Over here I've got some HSTs, nickel plated case, copper bullet. And over here, I've got brass case, this is a Winchester, and a nickel-plated bullet. Never seen a nickel-plated bullet before. It's supposed to be like a target ammo. Well, we'll put up some paper targets before I shoot this and see if we can tell the difference. With my shooting, at just this short distance, I don't know if I'll be able to tell a whole lot. So 10 yards back, steel plate down here. First shots of the new gun, see how it does. Well, that's not off to a good start. Had a little bit of a jam here. So, new gun, give it the benefit of the doubt. Try it again. Another jam. Try it again. Okay, two out of one magazine. Hopefully we can chalk that up to new gun, not broken in yet. Let's try another mag. And like I said, we're trying out some different ammo today. In the gun now, got some more of the Freedom Munitions, 200 grain. And in the next mag here, in the Metgar, got some HSTs. This is some of the older carry ammo I had. So it's been chambered a time or two. And I just want to test it out to see how that's going to function.
and it may be my fault. I might be limp wristing it a little bit. We'll concentrate on that this time and see, see what we can do. And if there's one consolation, I am hitting the target each time. I've not missed yet. Let's load them back up and try again. All right, I put a little more CLP on the gun. Let's see what happens this time. Now this magazine is Federal Hydroshocks. I generally stick with Federal as far as defensive ammo goes. So I'm either running Hydroshocks or HSTs. Let's see how these go. Now that magazine ran just fine. Let's try some more ball rounds. Generally, if you're going to have reliability issues, it's going to be with your hollow points, not the ball. And I did put some CLP on it, some more CLP. Uh, I usually like to use ballastol, but uh, CLP is the only thing I had with me today. Let's try it again. See if that helps any. That worked. Now let's try seven rounds of HSTs. That may have been the issue. It might have just been too dry. I put the uh, Miltec on it yesterday. Kind of ran the slide a few times and maybe just needed more lube. Never forget that. Any issues in life, try some more lube. You never know, it just might fix the uh, issue you're having. Or it might not. And this is why with every gun you have, especially if you plan on carrying it for protection and defense, I don't know what the difference between those two are, take it out to the range run a bunch of rounds through it. I've brought about 200 rounds with me today to try out. Different kind, you get 200 grain ball, 230 grain ball, 165 grain hollow points, 230 grain hollow point. Just to see if you're gonna have any issues, different magazines, try out different magazines, and just run it. Especially with 1911. I don't wanna call this a lower end gun, but it's not a Wilson Combat or uh, you know, not hawk anything like that. But if you're going to have any issues, you want to get them straightened out beforehand. I have noticed that most of the issues, though, are coming from the free munitions 200 grain ball. I'm going to try some of this Winchester 1911 target stuff now. The nickel coated bullet. And see how it does. I'm going to put up some paper, run a mag of it and run a mag of the Freedom. See if there's any noticeable differences in accuracy. So from this distance, we're about seven yards back. I've got paper target right here. I'm gonna shoot, then we're gonna go up here and look at the paper. And that was the Freedom Munitions 200 grain. Now we're gonna try the Winchester. No issues that time with cycling. See how we hit. Okay, not really a huge noticeable difference. Free munitions, Winchester. I may have shot this a little bit tighter. I don't know, I had a few flyers here and there. Between the Freedom and the Winchester target stuff, I can't really tell a huge difference from this distance. Either one will do good. So we're just gonna go back here to the table now and just put some rounds through the gun and I'll come back and tell you how it did from there. So I have originally said that this gun may be one of my winter carry guns, but until I can get the cycling issues straightened out with it, 
I'll stick with this Glock, the 2240 caliber. Or this Glock, the Model 26. Or this Glock, the 43. They always work for me. Which is why I'm a big fan of Glock. Not that they're the only reliable polymer striker fired gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in conclusion, as you can see, I've gotten the gun quite dirty. I think I know what the issue was, other than the fact that it's a new gun. It seemed like with the, especially the freedom munitions, I don't know what kind of powder they use, but the gun got dirty real quick. And the, I don't know if the feed ramp was just getting too clogged up, too dirty. It's a new gun, whatever. But I'll be back out shooting this one again, put a few more hundred rounds through it. Today I put about 250 through it. And like all the other Ruger 1911s I've had, I'm gonna have to take the grip screws off and put some Loctite on there because they're getting kind of loose. This one right here, I kept having to tighten up with my finger a little bit. They didn't bring any tools with me. But I'll get it working good. If not, I'll send it back to Ruger and I'm certain they'll take care of it. Any customer service issue I've had with them before, they've been amazing. So thanks for watching. But for right now, I think I'll stick with my Glock.